I had the B-Man Chief 2 22 caliber PCP air rifle as well as the Gauntlet 30 30 caliber PCP air rifle out today. Discovery Optics reached out to me. They wanted me to review a couple of their products. I figured I would talk about budget air guns for this video as well as budget optics. I've been getting a ton of different offers from different manufacturers to promote their product and Honestly, sometimes it just doesn't work out, so I just don't bother making a video and just let them know that I wasn't satisfied with their product. So if you're seeing a video with me promoting something, that means I like it enough to the point where I think I can recommend it to other people. Especially those, I know there's a ton of people in the comments looking for budget options. Let's focus on some budget-friendly stuff, like this B-Man Chief 2. The gun itself is $210. This scope is 60 bucks. So for $270 right then and there, the scope and the PCP, that's under 300 bucks. Now these scope rings will set you over the $300 budget limit. So you could technically go for a little bit cheaper option there. These go for about 40 bucks for the rings. They're actually pretty nice scope rings, but you could technically cut back a little bit on that. And I think you'd be probably good to go sub $300 price range. Now let's start off with the scope. The first thing you would notice when you pick this thing up is that it's extremely lightweight. It doesn't have a focus adjustment, but we take this thing out to 30 and 70 yards. I honestly couldn't even tell that I needed to adjust anything. It looked crystal clear the whole way through. So no problems with there. Now the turret adjustment. These numbers aren't actually written in or imprinted on the scope. It's just a sticker and the sticker's already coming off. So out of the whole scope, that is probably my only issue with it. For being a budget optic, it doesn't have to have every single option on the planet. It's not illuminated or anything like that. It's just very basic and simple. You get pretty clear clarity out of it. The adjustment range is pretty good. You could take this thing easily out to 100 yards, no problem, with the 3x9 power. So going back and forth between those adjustments and magnification, no complaints whatsoever. It does what it needs to do. I don't know how powerful of a rifle you could put that on but say for like this pellet gun i don't think you're ever going to have a problem with this losing zero now for the b-man chief 2 price tag is 210 dollars fill pressure 3000 psi 40 shots per fill you will not need a moderator on this it's pretty quiet so that's one extra savings you don't need to spend on here as a moderator or an adapter for one now for negatives on this this bolt handle is sometimes hard to cock back. You can see it has a slot cut out for where you can put the bolt and rest it in, which is fine. But then it has a slot a little bit further. That's where you have to pull it back to actually cock the gun. So sometimes you think you got it all the way, but it's not there. You need to recock it. Now, the only real issue with this, save a magazine in, if you throw this bolt forward and it's not actually cocked, you're putting a round in the chamber. You're gonna click the trigger and then it's not gonna fire. You're gonna pull the bolt back again, cock it, and then you're gonna push the bolt forward. And then you're gonna have a double feed. So if you have it back here, you can take the magazine out. Then you can throw the bolt forward and you'll only have one round in the chamber. So you just have to be kind of mindful for that. A lot of people kind of forget and they just throw a second round in and then you got a double feed. So not the end of the world, but just something to look out for. Let's bring this thing outside. I'll show you what this thing can do. 30 and at 70 yards. So let's go over that right now and I'll meet you back here. We have the B-Man Chief 2, the Discovery Optics MS 3-9 power scope. And we got these JSB exact pellets. We're at about 30 yards. Let's sight in here. I think it was at 100 last time. So let me adjust the scope. We'll do a couple groups and then I want to do a Know Your Limits. We are untethered because obviously that's going to require a little bit more of a budget and I want to keep this as low as possible on the price scale. See where we are on the target. Going to aim for center bullseye. Okay, I'm going to just bump it to the right a little tiny bit and I think we're good to go. Let's put one more group, top middle headshot. I might have gone left. <laughs> I'm gonna aim for that same hole though. Try and keep the group the same. If we're off, we'll move over to a different target. All right, left headshot. 
10 rounds, gone. Let's try one of these new mags. I'm not a big fan of these right now. Let's go for that far left center line. Let's go far right center line. Let's make short work of this know your limit target and then actually maybe we'll do it twice and see how repeatable this is. Then we're gonna move up to 70. I wanna try and get a group there. All right, we were a little bit left on that last one. Let's do it one more time. There you have it. Let's move on to 70. We're set up for 70 yards down there. I have not adjusted the scope. Let's just see how much of a drop this is gonna be. We're gonna aim for the same spot and just see how it groups. I'm gonna aim for the third line above the bullseye and see if it drops there. Okay, so aside from those, I think there's two flyers that went hole in hole on the left side. That group's not too, too bad. Maybe like four inches at 70 yards with pellets. I've had better luck with this when I tested it out prior to this video. I could probably tighten that up a little bit better we are only using exact pellets, so if we can find slugs that work really well in this, those groups should tighten up even better. Let's see if I can hit that spray paint, though. No problem. <laughs> okay, so that gives you a pretty decent estimate of what to expect with the B-Man Chief 2. We're rocking this Discovery MS 3-9 power scope, and I think it's a pretty good match for this rifle. Let me meet you back in there, and we'll discuss the next option for the gauntlet 30 30 caliber pcp air rifle now this discovery optic is the ed prs 5 to 25 gen 2 scope a little bit more expensive i'm going to show you what i've been dealing with that i can kind of compare this scope with though and that's what really got me going on this video is this scope is so comparable to some of the other ones that i have and it's on sale it's a little bit cheaper than the other optics that i've been using I have so many Arkins, I have Vortex. Comparing this to the Arkin, I have to say, this is nearly identical to it. So if you're looking for a nice budget option, it's not low range, it's in the mid tier, I would say. It's definitely not $1,000, it's right around 300. So it's not gonna absolutely break the bank, but it's giving you an optic that has options on it that cost up in the $500 range, I would say, on average. So for 300 bucks, you're going pretty close to about 50% of the cost on some of these things. You're getting close to that. Now, the cons on this. It's a heavy boy, just like the Arkin. That's my only complaint with these optics. They're very heavy, but if you're okay with that, you're gonna get one hell of a deal for an optic. The clarity on them is crystal clear. You get illumination, you have fine tuning on your focus. The turrets are gigantic. You have zero reset. So what's a zero reset? Basically, if say you sighted to 100 yards and then you wanted to move to 70 yards, well, you can take the turret cover off and then set that as your zero. So when you're adjusting for higher ranges or closer ranges, then you can make your adjustments there and then if you want to go back to 100 yards or whatever well then you just put it back to where you zeroed it very simple and easy to kind of adjust on the fly with that so that's very nice same scope rings as on the other one these are around 40 dollars a piece for that so you're talking three we'll say 350 for this and then the 30 caliber gauntlet goes for i think it's 500 right now maybe some sales a little bit cheaper and then with the moderator, you're talking right around $1,000 for this whole setup. And I think that's an actual pretty good budget deal. It's not super budget deal like the other B-Man Chief 2 setup, where it was right around $300. This thing will, it's just, it's 100% worth the money to me. The accuracy, 
the consistency. This one's regulated versus the unregulated B-Man. Huge cylinder. You get right around, I think it is 28 shots before you hit the reg limit on this. So you got potential out of that. Four mags per fill. Negatives on this though, I'm not a big fan of the stock. I have this M-Lock Picatinny rail, but this portion of the stock is not very stable wiggles around so if you put a bipod on it you might get some wiggle in there i would go with resting something on the bottle get a clamp and go that route versus this so that's my only real big issue with the gauntlet other than that this thing's an absolute powerhouse it's insanely accurate when you pair it with these griffin boat tail slugs it's just incredible take these fx 44.8 grain you can save some money with pellets and they'll still get the job done. I'd say up to 70 yards, you get really good accuracy with those pellets. You go beyond that, you can still get good accuracy, but you might get some flyers and whatnot. The slugs seem to have better consistency grouping at 100 yards. Now, the only other con on this scope is the finish. I don't know if this is going to be something that happens to the rest of it, or maybe... I don't know if something got on it, but there is a little tiny bit of rust on there. That could be from me. I don't know if I had something on my fingers and it just ate away at the finish. That could just be a fluke thing because everywhere else it's fine. It's just that one little spot. So I couldn't tell you on that for sure. Let's go out and put this thing through its paces. We'll do 30 again, 70, and then we'll step up a little bit and do 100. And then I'll meet you back here. Let's see where we are at 35 yards. Center bullseye. Okay, center bolt. Let's do one more. Same hole. We are going to go just a hair to the left. Let's go for that top middle headshot. This gauntlet with this Griffin ammo is an absolute monster. You pair it with a pretty decent scope, and I think this is probably one of the best options where you have a complete setup for a rifle, including that moderator under a grand. All right, know your limits time. Let's do this and move on to 70. We're making loops. This is rated for a little over 120 foot pounds ish. Kind of double tap it. I think I need to go just a tiny hair left. Next set of targets. I just have to wait for those to stop so I can actually see where it's hitting. <laughs> this finally throws those around. Just a hair to the right. Last one. I'll take it. Let's move to 70 yards, do a group there. Let's go for the far right center line. Let's go for that hole we just put in there. All right, let's go back to that far right center line. Go for the same hole. I'm continuously amazed by the consistency of this Griffin ammo, how accurate it is in the Gauntlet 30. Pair it with a pretty decent scope and you're in business. Go for the top middle headshot. Just, it's impressive for how cheap this gun is in comparison to so many others. You would never believe you're getting the accuracy that this thing puts out from a budget air gun. Sub $500 on sale. These used to go for 400, sometimes even 380. 100 yards, I'm not gonna adjust the scope, let's just see where this drops and we'll adjust from there. Let's aim for the neckline. Nearly hit bullseye. Let's aim for the hole that we just put in there. I don't think you can get any better than that. You see that bore that's up there? What about the turkey? Last but not least, the ram. 
All right, so that's gonna wrap it up here. I'll meet you back in there. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video, going over budget options, getting started into air guns. I'm a big fan of that B-Man Chief too. For the price and how capable it is, I'd say within 50 yards, you have pretty much a little laser beam for an air gun right there. It's insanely consistent with those pellets, and for how cheap they are, you can't complain. Now, you step it up to the gauntlet, you're getting a ton more accuracy at longer range, obviously a lot more power, and regulation. The regulated ability on that is just perfect because you're getting incredible consistency. You cannot complain about that at all, especially for the price. $500 off sale is still a damn good deal for that gun. You cannot go wrong with the Gauntlet 30. Pair it with these Griffin Boattail slugs and it, it, you can't beat it. I'm telling you, you cannot beat that. It is just so precise for so cheap. And then you pair it with a nice scope. You don't even need that EDPRS Gen 2. You could get something a little bit cheaper. I just prefer that because I use the Arkin and I can give a direct comparison to that Arkin. And I've been using those for probably close to two years and I really like those. So going from those to Discovery and really liking the Discovery Optic just the same for the same price, giving you two different options right there. The choice is yours at that point, but between the two, if you can get that one on sale from Discovery, I would 100% go with that because for $300, that thing is a steal, I can tell you. I was so hesitant getting into scopes when I first started doing this. I'd get those UTG scopes for like 40 bucks, and they're trying to be like all this like tactical stuff and whatnot, but it's just ridiculous. It's trying to do all these things like a jack of all trades, but it doesn't do any of them well. This thing is trying to keep it more simplistic while actually excelling at what it does. So hopefully this helps you decide on picking a budget air gun if you are in the market for one. And if you like me going over and doing these videos, just let me know and I can try and figure out something else to set up. If there's something you have in mind you want me to try, just let me know. Maybe I'll pick it up and do it on. I can certainly tell you this though, I still don't like GoPro Hero 11s. The battery sucks in them, they overheat still indoors and this thing's over overheated right at the end. Killed off the battery, had to replace the camera, so I'll see you in the next one.